Okay, so let's try and get this to a real database and I'm going to use Azure, I might as well just say that or Azure, however you want to pronounce it. And that's one thing I also want to tell you that I already set it all up. So this is going to be a very quick version of actually connecting to a database. My goal is not actually explaining how to set up a database and work with that. The goal is to show you how you can actually change from an in-memory database in here into a real database somewhere in the anywhere, right? And I'm just using the Azure database because I have access for that. So, so do you, I guess. You can get free licenses there if you don't. Um, but the goal is not to show you how to set up Azure and work with Azure, blah, 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 blah. It's more to show you how to take a database connection and add it to your application and actually get up and running in very short time with a database somewhere that you already set up. So let's do it. Step one, I'm going to Azure here and I'm just going to create a new SQL database. Now this is what I promised you not to show you. So I'm just doing it really fast. I'm calling the database CS2017. There we go. Now that's all you have to do. And let's just say create. Now that's going to be created because I need a connection string. That's what I need for Azure right now. Just let it create this and let's go back to the code. Why we do this, I want to do one more thing and this is kind of, we'll fix this in lesson series five because I'm not quite satisfied with this, but I want to make one more thing. I want, when inside the unit of work, when I'm creating my context, I want to make sure that the context is actually created. The database is created, the tables are created. And you can do that with a single line right here, this guy, context, when you have a context available, you say database, ensure created. And that'll kind of say, if the database is not initialized yet, it'll create SQL queries behind the scenes that says, create tables, all the tables we need to kind of build this setup. And, and it'll actually start making those tables and preparing the relations and making everything work, matching our current context. So it'll match all the DB sets we have available here. It'll match all the, you guys will end up with a huge Fluent API right here, but it'll match those and create everything for you behind the scenes with this single line right here. Now, what I'm kind of complaining about here is maybe it shouldn't be here, the context, maybe we should be able to dependency inject that. I said it again. And I will work on dependency injection and show you that, but not until series five, because I think that's advanced features. And in series five, we can go crazy after we had the Angular course next. I need to get started on Angular. So we will wrap this up soon. I guess the database is now created on Azure and I'll, or Azure or Azure, or however you pronounce it. Let's see if we have a database, there we go. All I need from my database is actually a connection string. So I'll do here show database connection string right here. And this is the guy you need from Azure and this is also the guy you'll need from whatever database you're working with. It explains kind of the server and this is the link for the server for Azure in my case the name of the database you're going to work with right here. You're going to probably have a user ID for logging in with a username and a password. I'm not going to tell you mine, but I'm going to use it. And then the rest of it is just kind of stuff that I get for free from Azure, so, or Azure, or Azure. So let's just use it. So I'm just going to grab all of this. Going back to the code, and again, be sure that right now you put this in here on line 17 or something in the unit of work that you actually want the context to auto create the database if it doesn't exist and auto create the tables if they do not exist or else you'll get an issue. Uh, jumping into the context is the last thing I need to do. I'm going to outcome in this line right here. There we go. So I don't want to use the default setup where I go in and build an in-memory database right here. I want to now override configuration like this. And if you don't get the, if you don't have this already, let me just show you how you can get it because it's actually not that complex. You can just write override like this and then you can do on configuration like this and there you go. Now you have the exact same lines we have up here. And then you also, I just kind of removed, let me just put this back. I just removed the default setup and then I added, if option, bu option builder is configured, if that's not configured yet, then use an SQL server. And here we go. I'm just going to grab that entire line and add the username and password of mine. And then I'm done. And, and what I'm talking about here, adding the username and password that I don't want to show you is inside this use connection string. There's a user ID. I'm going to remove everything here and add my username. There's a password. I'm going to remove also the curly brackets, everything here, not the semicolon, but also the curly brackets, everything like this. And I'm going to delete that as well. And then I can put in the information, right? So I'm going to do that. Give me a second. So I've added my connection string and in here I've added my username and my password. So everything should be ready. And now I'll, all I'll have to do is try and run this and see what happens. Let's see what happens. Let's try and run it. So the application is running. Let's try and do a send right here. 
nothing major, it looks the same. So again, notice no difference and that's a good thing because I didn't expect any difference. I'm just using a real database compared to an in-memory database. Let's try and make a change here just to show you. Let's try and do a put request and let's just go back and do the one we've worked with a lot of times in the last couple of lessons. Let's add this, uh, call this guy bullglubberlitch, like this, and uh, give him one, two, and three, and do a send here. Now I'm sending it to the real database. Seems that everything went well, great stuff. Let's try and shut down our application and restart it. So I've restarted the server. Notice I restarted the server, it shut down and started up again locally. Not the database, just the server locally. The database is still running in the cloud. And I'm going to do it again. Now you can see the name has changed here. And another thing you can see when I scroll down is if I go and get all customers, it actually added all the customers once more. So here we have the first set with me and Ole. And then we have the set again. Why? Because in our startup file, every time I restart my local server, I'm actually sending data to the database. So let's just get that out of the way so you guys don't do that every time you restart if you want to use a real database. So I'm just shutting down, going into the startup file. And everything here from actually the facade right here, let's just out comment all of this because I don't want to populate data now every time I restart the server. I don't need it anymore because now I'm running with a real database. Notice the database is live. The REST API is still only locally. So that's the difference. The database live, REST API local on your machine. But that just means that now you can connect to any database you want, kind of. And yes, you'll probably have some other twerks. But I just want to give you a quick example on how you can actually connect to a real database. Next lesson, let's try and see if we can actually get the data on in Visual Studio so we can see what's in there. See you next time.